So this morning, our session is focused on soil health. And as the first presenter, I thought it was my job to um, set the stage for our conversation about soil health and really um, bring to attention sort of what do we mean by this word that we hear all around us, this important buzzword in agriculture right now, which is soil health. And when I think about what soil health is in its most fundamental sense, it's the ability of soil to function for its intended use. And depending upon who we are as managers, you know, that intended use uh, has a, a wide range of needs and outcomes. So it really is upon us to think about, to be able to articulate our goals for what soil function is. And I think that's one of the really exciting things that's changing in agriculture right now is our attention to how we rely on soil and what it is that we count on for it to do. The way we go about measuring soil health and how well that soil is functioning ranges from the physical, chemical, chemical and biological properties of soils. And this is an area where there's a lot of discussion, debate and research going on, um, not only in Canada, but across the world in trying to identify what are the best ways to measure soil health in terms of all these number of properties, as well as to create some kind of index for how do we take all these different functions that we expect of soil and come up with a rating for what soil health really is or how healthy a soil is? When I was preparing for this presentation, I was reflecting on the conversations I've had with several farmers and producers about what it is they need soil to, to do for them in their integrated systems where they're managing both crop and livestock in the prairies. And I saw some themes when I reflected on my conversations with these growers. They were wanting soils that could produce, you know, productive and nutritious forage and grain crops. They uh, need them to, these soils to cycle nutrients and in livestock systems that also, that often involves, you know, the application or integration of manure. A very important theme is trying to increase organic matter because it's such a key measure in terms of you know, water management, nutrient cycling, and soil microbial communities. Uh, another important goal is to protect soil as a resource in terms of reducing water and wind erosion and increasing infiltration. So you know, on the prairies where precipitation is an important limitation that we're dealing with all the time, you know, having a way to capture that resource and store it in the soil. Increasingly, farmers and producers are articulating their goals about supporting microbial communities and also reducing soil compaction. So these are some of the goals that I think uh, I hear from the producers that I talk to. And of course, having your goal for soil health is really important. Um, I think one of the places where many of these or one of the new buzzwords that I hear increasingly on the prairies that coalesces many of these goals for soil health together is the new term regenerative agriculture. And although regenerative agriculture is still a new term that is defined very broadly by a range of groups from food companies to producers themselves, I think we can see in many of the themes that I hear when people talk about regenerative agriculture, um, you know, keeping the soil covered, increasing living plant cover, integrating livestock, reducing tillage when possible. And um, I think I'm just repeating myself here uh, for the last one, but keeping the soil covered, armoring the soil with covers um, really ties into uh, the next topic that I want to introduce, and that is cover crops. So cover crops are being adopted on the prairies because they're helping farmers to meet their soil health goals, which are really a step towards, you know, creating new integrated systems uh, for both crop and livestock production. So cover crops themselves are not the end goal, but they're a tool to reach soil health or new systems design goals. So what are cover crops? I mean, cover crops can look like the cash crops that we grow. It's it's the reason, the intention for growing this, uh, this crop that's, that's shifted. So in its simplest definition, cover crops are really just any kind of crop that we grow where the purpose isn't to you know, harvest a grain crop. And um, 
And so the intention is important when defining, but, but the places that we're using cover crops or the way that we manage these crops uh, is, is really variable. You know, the one way that I think about cover crops, which is sort of flipping things on its head is, you know, we often think about how we manage soil to achieve productive crops. And cover crops are sort of flipping that around where we've started to think about how can we use plants as a tool to manage soils. And so that's another way that, that I define what cover crops are. It's a tool to help us manage an outcome either for our soil or our cropping system. So as you can see in these pictures here, we can grow all kinds of different cover crop species uh, or species of plants as cover crops. They can be you know, the kinds of plants that we grow as grain crops um, that are easy to access and are affordable. They could also be special designer species that are pulled from, from other places um, that, we, that we use in, in a new way. And so there's a lot of diversity potential in terms of introducing diversity. Um, you can also see in some of these pictures here, especially the bottom picture, where we can grow cover crops across an entire field or in just a target, targeted section of a field. So because there's so many ways to use cover crops, it's important to have your goal in mind when you start making a plan for cover crops. And when I start talking with students or, or producers about using cover crops, they're often coming to me saying, you know, what's the recipe that I can follow that's going to make me make this work for me on my farm? And the conversation that we usually end up having is more like a game of cards rather than uh, a recipe where you need to take stock of what it is you have in terms of windows for growing cover crops and then think about what your goals are and start matching up the plants, the window and the management that you have available to you to try and reach your goal. So it's hard when it's uh, based on knowledge and, and skills. It takes people to talk to in order to start learning this area. And I think that uh, having those networks are gonna be really important for the success of cover crops on the prairies. Um, also important because we have such a wide range of goals, it's important to think about, you know, whether your goals are short-term or long-term, especially in terms of evaluating whether you are getting what you are putting into your cover crops in terms of seed costs, as well as your time and efforts in management. So taking a look at you know, what we have available to use for cover crops, I think is a really important uh, aspect for, uh, and, and somewhat unique on crops where we are integrating, or in, in, uh, in rotations where we're integrating crops and livestock, to, livestock together. So on the prairies, we have sort of two major windows for growing cover crops. The first one I'm going to talk about is where you know livestock producers are really uh, moving ahead quite quickly, um, and that is full season cover crops. So this is intentionally taking a year out of grain crop production and growing a cover crop um, during that year. It's often used as a source of annual forage um, or and grazed. Uh, it's often targeted at fields where we have problem soils, maybe salinity, maybe excess moisture. It's often, full season cover crops that are often a, a solution that farmers are using to bring fields that have been too wet for planting back into production for the next year. We're also familiar with full season cover crops in terms of green manure crops that are often used in organic systems to build nitrogen or to mobilize phosphorus during during a year when, when grain crops are not being produced. So this is an area, full season cover crops are, are an important aspect for uh, uh, livestock systems where, they're, where they have grazing opportunities. Probably the newest paradigm for cover crops on the prairies is thinking about the shoulder season window for cover crops. So these are cover crops that are grown uh, after a major cash crop is harvested. So these are, you know, the end of the growing season after harvest, where there's still some time and space to utilize uh, resources in order to uh, provide cover and protection of the soil, and also to feed soil microbial communities as a, at a time in the year when they're not used to having much uh, plant resource available to them. So we can really send, you know, the energy that we can collect and sugars 
that plants photosynthesize from the sun and send those down to those microbial communities. Um, one of the big challenges we have on the prairies is being able to establish shoulder season cover crops. And so intercropping is often a solution that you know, cover crop innovators are using right now uh, to integrate shoulder season cover crops. And, uh, and often you know, these, these shoulder season cover crops are either terminated with free, with, by freezing temperatures, which we can usually rely on on the prairies, or by terminating them in the springtime. So in terms of where are we seeing cover crops being used in uh, systems that integrate livestock in the prairies right now, I reflected again on the conversations that I've been having with students and producers about cover crops in their systems. And, and I think there's some uh, important themes here. The first picture uh, labeled number one is a picture of you know, livestock out grazing. And these could be either full season cover crops or shoulder season cover crops. And one of the, the big drivers for using cover crops in this way is to provide uh, uh, a nutritious source of forage, often at times of year when uh, rangeland or other pasture land aren't, our product, aren't as productive. And so there's some real natural um, synergy here in terms of being able to push livestock productivity by having these other sources of forage. The second picture um, in this slide is where you see the forage harvester uh, is a system where uh, cover crops are being integrated with either green feed or silage crops. And so you can really get two uh, sources of forage um, in the same year if you are interested in grazing um, those systems or utilizing them um, to benefit the soil. Because often, you know, uh, those systems where we're using silage crops are really pushing those fields. The third picture here also connected to uh, maybe situations where you have confined livestock integrated into a grain system is having a time and a place where you can apply manure. And so this is a field that I, a picture I took in a field where uh, the farmer who didn't have uh, uh, barns as a part of their farm, but that were contracted for manure application by other neighboring farms always had a field that was available whenever he got the call. Um, and having living plants growing was important to this producer because for him, it meant that he wasn't going to, uh, because the manure application was dependent on someone else's timeline, he felt more confident that there wasn't gonna be soil compaction during that manure application. And that had value to him in terms of his, uh, his grain uh, system that he was managing. The last picture, which has me in it, I'm standing in corn where I've intercropped um, a high protein forage, which uh, I'm looking at in a project with Dr. Emma McGew in animal science at the University of Manitoba. And a lot of producers are looking at these new systems where, where again, we're looking at intercropping cover crops between the row to create um, late fall or early winter grazing opportunities. So there are many different ways where cover crops can be integrated into uh, livestock systems and grain systems on the prairies. Now, aside from my storytelling about, you know, the conversations I've had with farmers um, over the last several years, you know, we really don't have many places where we can learn or get statistics on you know, how much adoption have we had about cover crops. And so that's one thing that, that um, I am looking at with a, a graduate student of mine, Callum Morrison, in our Prairie Cover Crop Survey. So we started this survey in 2019. I wasn't too sure whether we were gonna hear from 15, five, <laughs> 50 or 100 people. And we were overwhelmed, largely due to Callum's enthusiasm for the project and how many people we were able to talk to. Um, and so here's a map from 2019 of the respondents we had across the three prairie provinces of uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. And you can see that farmers who were excited to talk about what they were doing with cover crops with us, and we got, we got uh, responses from all corners of the prairies. 
So today I'm going to share just a few results with you to sort of spark conversation and questions and discussion about how cover crops are being used to manage uh, or to reach soil health goals from our current survey that's underway for 2020. And here's a picture, in, picture of Callum, who's been working really hard to um, engage with all communities of, of producers and farmers on the prairies. So these results that I'm sharing with you now are from the 2020 survey as of, as of last week. And we have had uh, 176 farmers um, that have reported over 60,000 acres of cover crops that were grown in 2020. Of those respondents, uh, more than half, 107, included livestock in their operations and their cover crops totaled um, just under 25,000 acres. So if we take a look at just the respondents that were um, utilizing livestock, 40% um, of the acres that they grew were in shoulder season cover crops and 60% of them were in full season cover crops. So the majority of the cover crop types that were being grown for these livestock producers were full season cover crops. And it's interesting to take a look at where uh, these farmers are using uh, these different types of cover crops. So if we look at the graph on the left, we've got shoulder season cover crops. So those that are, you know, uh, usually in the fall or the early spring, the majority of those acres are, are in Manitoba, where again, you know, Manitoba has more moisture and a little bit longer growing season. So that also sort of ties in that, that story together. If we look at the full season cover crop graph on the right hand side, there we see the majority of the, of the acres are uh, in Alberta, where we tend to have more beef production. Um, so it's interesting to see the type of cover crop that's being grown is definitely influenced by where you are and, and what kind of system and what kind of livestock you have. So if we take a look at, you know, what kind of livestock um, farmers that are, have been, these early adopter farmers that are growing cover crops have, by as we were expecting, the, the vast majority of them have, have cattle, but we also have representation for livestock operations that have confined animals in confinement, like uh, chickens, pigs. Um, we also have, you know, an important group of, of sheep and bison farmers, as well as we have a few dairy producers. So through the rest of these graphs, you can keep this in mind in terms of the respondents that we have, um, where I'm comparing and now in a series of graphs, uh, the responses to our, our survey questions for the groups that have livestock and then the groups that don't have livestock that are in red. So, so thinking about that green bar there is the group that have livestock. So one of the questions I wanted to know is how long have these producers been growing cover crops? And from these results that you can see here, the majority of them have been growing cover crops for less than five years. We have some with as much as 10 years experience, but this is a really new, or our conference today is talking about new and changing things in agriculture. And this is for sure one of them on the prairies. A really great question that we asked was, what kind of benefits do you see on your farm from using cover crops? And in fitting with the theme for this, this afternoon's session, improving soil health, increasing biodiversity, increasing organic matter, increasing infiltration are among the highest reported um, observed benefits by farmers themselves. How long did it take to see those benefits from cover crops was a really interesting question to ask as well. I mean, this is, this is based on people's observations. This is not based on, you know, going out and measuring or if they measured, uh, you know, their own personal measurements. So in, in their own point of view, farmers see benefits in just one or two years from using cover crops. There's also a group that has, that reports that there is no benefit that they have observed yet. But we were, I was quite surprised by how clear the signal was that farmers see uh, benefits from cover crops in prairie systems. One other aspect that I wanted to bring out today as uh, we were talking about soil health and you know, the last major push for soil health on the prairies was where we were looking to reduce tillage um, on the prairies. And so it's interesting to see that um, introduction of cover crops um, also relates to the amount of tillage that's being practiced with soil. So I asked the question with cover cropping, how has your tillage changed? And um, almost 
half of those respondents said that um, that there was a significant or a slight decrease in tillage um, as a result of introducing cover crops into their system. So there's lots of things that we could talk about from this survey, but I thought that those were some of the highlights that really focus on the connection between how cover crops are being used in integrated crop livestock systems on the prairies. And I think in summary today, you know, from uh, my point of view as a professor and someone who's talking to farmers about cover crops and asking farmers to participate in, uh, in research through this survey, um, we're learning that cover crops are being adopted on prairie systems and that they're being used as a tool to reach soil health goals. If there are any producers here that are interested, um, they can still participate in our survey until the 1st of April. And we are asking farmers to participate that have grown cover crops or are interested but haven't grown cover crops yet. And I just want to acknowledge too that, you know, this information is made possible because of the support of organizations like Western Grains Research Foundation, the Canadian Agricultural Partnership through Manitoba Agriculture, and the support of General Mills. So I'm looking forward to uh, the other presentations uh, in this session and our panel discussion later, so we'll see you then.